this is a continuation of session two. The Gospel of Luke has a theme, Yeshua the Messiah, the Son of Man. Luke was referred to as the beloved physician in Colossians chapter 4, verse 14. So we refer to him as Dr. Luke. We see him refer to medical matters in his gospel, such as he mentions about uh, Peter's mother-in-law having a high fever. He was a faithful traveling companion of the Apostle Paul and could have become a believer through Paul's ministry. Traditionally, you will hear that he was a Gentile. And if that is true, he would be the only Gentile or non-Jewish author of the books of the scriptures. Now, we, we don't know for certain, uh, but, but it's some believe that maybe he was Jewish. Maybe he was a Hellenistic Jew. Because in Colossians 4, it's not clear that he was not circumcised or not Jewish. Again, though there's no proof he was Jewish, I say this tongue-in-cheek, we Messianic Jews adopt him because he was a doctor. <laughs> if he wasn't Jewish, he should have been. Though this not mentioned, he's not mentioned explicitly as the author of Luke, traditionally he has been accepted as the author of Luke and the book of Acts. And he states himself in Luke 1 verse 2 uh, that he wasn't an eyewitness of these events. Others were. Though we don't know for certain, his gospel was probably written around A.D. 60, possibly, possibly in Caesarea Maritima when Paul was in prison there for two years. Luke tells us more about Yeshua than any of the other Gospels. A little over one half of his Gospel is just what Yeshua said. Luke also wrote more of the Brit Hadashar of the New Testament than any other writer, including the Apostle Paul. He wrote around 28% of the Brit Hadashar. Luke wrote his Gospel to emphasize the humanity of the Messiah. While Matthew wrote to the Jews and Mark to the Romans, Luke wrote to the Greeks. Now, the Greeks had two major areas of interest. The first area was their concept of the ideal man. This would be someone who was self-disciplined, fit, agile in both mind and body. Luke presents Yeshua as just such a person, one who had full control over his thoughts and his body. As to the humanity of the Messiah, it is Luke who tells us how Yeshua developed from his youth. More so than any of the other Gospel writers, he notes that Yeshua was hungry, thirsty, tired at times. The second major area of interest to the Greeks was historical accuracy. Many of the early histories come from Grecian records. This helps explain why Luke chose to write his own gospel the way he did. Luke wanted to communicate Yeshua's life in consecutive order, in a way that would appeal to the Greek mindset. As I mentioned, this Havara and Dr. Fruchenbaum's book for this series follow Luke's order of events since he said that he was putting them in consecutive order. Dr. Fruchenbaum in his book points out that Luke has three main areas of concern in his gospel. His first concern was Jerusalem. Jerusalem. He revealed what Yeshua said and did in this holy city, and he taught things about Jerusalem that the other three gospel writers left out. While in the book of Acts, the movement is from Jerusalem to the uttermost parts of the world, in Luke, the Gospel of Luke, the story begins and ends in Jerusalem. Luke's second major concern was the Gentiles. He recorded details of Yeshua's ministry among them and his teachings and sayings about them that the other Gospel writers chose to omit. Luke's concern makes sense because he was probably led to the Lord by Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles. And Luke's third special concern was women. He recorded the ministries women had with Yeshua, or their ministry to Yeshua, or ministry they received from Yeshua, that the other gospel writers left out. According to the rabbis, women were a separate people. The implications of this conviction were manifold in Judaism. 
women, and I'm talking about in ancient times, or biblical times, women were exempt from certain religious rituals that were obligatory for men. They did not have to recite the Shema, nor did they have to wear phylacteries or tefillin. They were exempt from all positive commandments, which required the keeping of specific deadlines and, and thus were bound to a rigid time frame. On the other hand, women were also exempt from those negative commandments, thou shall not, that by nature only applied to men. Women were not eligible to be counted as a part of a, of a Jewish minion, in other words, namely one of ten free men who were mandatory to perform a worship service in a synagogue setting. Now, we're talking about in biblical times. That may not be true today in all of Judaism. However, women were allowed to read the Sabbath lessons in the synagogue, though as far as we know of, there's no such incident ever being recorded of that that women were present in the synagogues not only the Sabbath but also during the week becomes evident from Paul's epistles. I want to add to that that Charles Ryrie also points out Luke gave more attention than the uh, than the other Gospels to the events surrounding the births of Yeshua and of Yohanan or John the Baptizer. Also Luke showed a common interest in individuals only Luke mentions about Zacchaeus in chapter 19, the thief on the cross who believed in Yeshua, that's in chapter 23, the parables of the prodigal son in chapter 15, and the repentant tax collector in the temple that beat his heart, beat his chest and said, God forgive me a sinner, that's in chapter 18, the story of the good Samaritan in chapter 10, that's only in the gospel of Luke. And, and the story about the one out of ten grateful ex-lepers who were healed in chapter 17. So all those are only in the Gospel of Luke. The Gospel of Luke has a special emphasis on prayer in ten places. He also has shows interest in poverty and in wealth on seven places in the Gospel. And the Gospel of Luke contains four beautiful hymns. One, the Magnificat of Miriam or Mary, uh, that when she met Elizabeth, uh, she, she was praising God about the birth of the Messiah, the Son of the Most High. That's in chapter 1, verses 46 through 55. Also, only in the Gospel of Luke do we have the blessing of Zechariah. That was John the baptizer's father over his son's birth. That's also later in chapter 1. And then there's the Gloria in Excelsis uh, of the angels, uh, you know, it's praising God. They were doing that to the shepherds over Yeshua's birth. That's in chapter 2, verse 14. And also the blessing of Simeon overseeing baby Yeshua before Simeon would end up dying. So he got to see the Messiah. So all those are only in the Gospel of Luke. Now that's going to end session 2. And so... Uh, in session three, I'm going to do uh, an overview of the Gospel of John, and then we're going to delve in to paragraph two, which is dealing with the prologue of the Gospel of John. That's in John chapter one, verses one through 18. So I encourage you to go ahead and read that ahead of time before session three, uh, so that, that uh, you'll be prepared uh, for the teaching on that. God bless you.